Oh, ring, ring, you gonna frame O.J.? Well, hell, I really like those Naked Gun movies. <laughs> but you're right, it's just too good. I'm gonna put it at your disposal of the Marines, the Navy, the CIA, and the FBI, because we have got to get that son of a bitch. You wanna buy some acid? Listen, you fuckers, you screwheads. Fuck, man, we got chance! I'm looking my chest, I'm looking my triceps, I'm looking the back of my calves, and I'm looking my heart, and I'm looking my lungs. I'm looking my butt tops. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what, Steve King, why don't you just take your mama home some chicken, and then I won't have to stuff my boot all up in your ass. Man, you are one crazy motherfucker. What is all? Hello, Twitter world. Welcome back to... Eat shit and die, Ricky. Well, I know one person that won't be watching this ever. O.J. Simpson. Now, unlike everyone else who's just dancing on this guy's grave, I understand he's the one black man in America. You can all unite and take out all of your frustrations on... You have to... I know you have to... The rest of them have to have their ass kissed 100% of the fucking time, but O.J. Simpson is the one... The one that you're allowed to just shit on endlessly. I get it. He killed some people. All right? P. Diddy, R. Kelly were... Apparently have been raping children. All right? Snoop Dogg has killed somebody, and that d does not stop you from buying his fucking records. Suge Knight killed Tupac and Biggie. Still still making records. Still selling them. And that was over, like, a business beef. I, I mean, at least OJ's thing was personal. I, I remember following that, because everybody else did when it happened. I mean, I was eight years old, so I was just looking at it from the point of view of, you know, well, put him away. He killed those people. And they're like, the, even I understood the DNA evidence that, that apparently most of the fucking jury didn't get. They really had the dumbest people in that jury box. But in retrospect, with perspective, weighing that miscarriage of justice against some of the shit I've seen recently, like, you really put this in perspective. Isn't it better that a bunch of people, uh, we'll just say black people because that's what they were, uh, looked at OJ's case. And keep in mind, this was like right after the Rodney King thing. They were pissed off about Rodney King. And they looked at this and went, let's just let this motherfucker out. J just to prove a point. And, you know, that seems shitty. Like, let, in spite of all the evidence, let's just say not guilty. That seems shitty. But you know what's way worse to me? is ignoring all of the evidence to make sure one of your fellow citizens is fucking incarcerated. I'm seeing that happening more and more, and I gotta be honest with you, I'd rather it go the other way. And it's not like those people were sitting in the jury box and heard out, like, looked at all the evidence in the Beltway sniper case and went, yeah, let's cut a brother a break. Like, OJ wasn't gonna fucking hurt anybody else. OJ killed the one person he was ever gonna kill. Well, two, but, and let, let's, let's also, I hate to be this guy, but do you think if he had slashed up Nicole Simpson and Tyrone Williams, we'd give a fuck that this would have gone on this goddamn long? Or Raymond Ching Chon? I know I just made that one up, but obviously that one's supposed to be Chinese or something. Julio Juarez, Bill Stevens. No, what was the last name of the guy he fucking killed? I'll leave it at that. That's why we give a shit. That's why he's been a pariah for 30 fucking years. Snoop Dogg's a killer. You still buy his fucking records. Hey, I was acquitted. Yeah, so was OJ. And as, as easy as it is to fault people retrospectively for uh, not being aware that uh, Rodney King's ass-kicking was 100% fucking justified, you didn't have... 
alternative media back. Like, you really had to be a goddamn loser to care beyond a headline. Like, if you were really going around researching news stories in your private time, when the internet wasn't available, like, we weren't, people didn't go, like, to the library and roll through those little, uh, that microfilm slides of old newspapers and shit. Nobody had time. Nobody gave a shit. People had lives. You just heard what the TV told you. So whatever you made of that information, if you didn't get the rest of it, if all you got was, hey, these four cops beat the shit out of this guy on the side of the road, it was caught on tape, and they let him go. If that's all the information you got, because that's really all the information mainstream media would feed you back then, we thought they were actually reporting the news back then. The whole idea that the government, that they were like a propaganda wing for the government, that, yeah, that, that was like in RoboCop. That, that was movie shit to us back then. They're like, yeah, yeah, that, that's the what-if scenario. And we wouldn't be surprised to find out that, you know, ABC, NBC, and CBS, and C-SPAN, and all the others were bought and paid for by the government. We wouldn't be surprised, but we didn't think it was actually happening. We thought a lot of things were movie shit, and a lot of movie shit was real that wasn't. Like, for instance, did you know that if you flick a cigarette into a pool of gasoline, it doesn't go and start like a trail, and it won't light somebody on fire? All it'll do is go and go out, like you flicked it in water. But still, no smoking at the gas pump. Well, actually, you know, the vapors... No, they don't. There's this, there's this thing that stops the vapors coming out of the tank from lighting the cigarette. It's called air. There's way too much fucking air. You're not, you're not in a contained room or anything. You could stick the end of the lit cigarette into the gas nozzle and take hits off of it, and it wouldn't blow up. Don't do that, in case I'm wrong. <laughs> But it wouldn't. No lighting cigarettes at the gas pump. That should be the rule. Now, and, and look, I, I think OJ should have went away for it. Don't get me wrong. He was guilty. But just people get so like ridiculous. Like they're he was smiling and celebrating when they rendered the not guilty verdict. But what the fuck would you do? What well, was he supposed to go up there and go, hey guys, what, guys, guys? I appreciate it. <laughs> Let's get real. I killed the bitch. I don't know about you guys, but look, I, put me on a murder trial, a double murder, in a state with the death penalty. I did do it, didn't do it, really doesn't matter. It's a slam dunk case either way against me. I am fucked. This has gone on for a year. It's on TV, and I hear the words, not guilty. Not only would I smile and laugh, but... I'm gonna come start beating off right there in front of everyone. I'd run up to the f Judge Ito's desk and grab his little hammer and stick it up my ass and just juice the entire crowd as I sang Eye of the Tiger on my way out of the courtroom. Of course, I'd probably go to jail for stealing that little hammer and indecent exposure and all that shit, but hey, it ain't double murder. Look at him. They're dead and he's out playing golf. Ooh, yeah, he's what luxury. I'm sure he's having a great time doing it, too. Four, fuck you, killer! Do you know what OJ could have been fucking doing if it hadn't been for Nicole? If he just not hooked up with her, who fucking knows what OJ could have accomplished? I mean, fuck, he'd already won a Heisman Trophy. He was in a movie with Paul Newman. Everybody liked him. I didn't even know who he was until he killed his wife. But everybody liked him. I didn't watch football, so I I, nah, I don't gamble, so football's boring to me. He had nothing at stake. Uh, so I only know him from this 30 years of being a murderer, and him with him popping up, well, not anymore, but, you know, with him popping up here and there on Twitter, talking about shit I don't care about, I just don't, I don't know. I don't see an evil killer. I just see a guy who fucked up. That's, that's weirdly how I see OJ. He's just a guy who fucked up. Got into some stupid shit. Again, I have P. Diddy's uh, child trafficking ring to compare it to now. Which I feel still feel like he's going to get less shit for than OJ did for 
the murder of these two people. Actually, I'll do you one better. I actually think they're... Don't get me wrong, I'm not going to die on this hill. I'm not 100% sure one way or the other, and I also don't think it matters. But I kind of think there is a sliver of reasonable doubt as to whether or not O.J. Simpson actually killed Nicole. I have a small sliver. Goldman, I know he killed. There's no way out of him being a killer. I do have my own theory about this incident, but either way, O.J. is still a killer. It, that's the thing that really kind of bugs me about a lot of conspiracies and conspiracy theories, because they'll start somewhere kind of reasonable, which is like, all right, Man, that was a really difficult shot. It would make more sense. I think there might have been another guy shooting from over here behind this fence and another guy shooting from over here at the overpass with Oswald up here. They're in a triangle. So one of the three is definitely going to hit him, blah, blah, blah. Somehow, that reasonable thing to investigate or look into suddenly turns into Oswald was never even in the window. Oswald never fired the gun. Oswald was set up. He was sheep dipped. And why, why can't you just let Oswald be one of the fucking shooters and keep your conspiracy sensible? And mine is pretty sensible, mostly because it's not really a conspiracy. It's just based off of, well, two. Th cross referencing just two things. One is OJ's confession uh, book, If I Did It. which details this dude named Charlie who makes no fucking sense as a character in this story. Nothing he does is what a normal human being would do. Like, if you went over to a guy's, uh, with a guy to his ex-wife's house and he ended up killing her and some dude who was bringing back sunglasses, you wouldn't stand by and watch him do both of them, then actually volunteer to take the bloody clothes and the murder weapon and actually take them somewhere and make them disappear. If you were what he says Charlie was, which was just some casual acquaintance, wouldn't any person just run to the cops immediately? Wouldn't you drive away from O.J.'s house and go straight to the cops and go, uh, O.J. Simpson just killed his wife and some Jew. Here's the evidence. Everything Charlie does makes so little sense that people have actually theorized. More than one uh, analyst of said book, well, book, did, there's only one chapter you give a shit about. It really might as well have been a pamphlet. But Charlie is so ludicrous, he's actually speculated to be an imaginary friend, like Dexter's dad or some shit. But I actually think I know who this guy is. And if I'm right, and the, this guy Charlie is the dude I'm thinking it might be, then everything Charlie does makes sense. It makes perfect sense. Over the years, Clay and Glenn were very close. What I thought was extraordinary about it, his brother led us to the crime scene. This is the first time in my life where I felt I was doing something that was so right that I actually felt good inside. I came to a realization that uh, I wasn't turning in my brother. I was turning in a serial killer. My brother hadn't lived there for a long time. But Glenn was now far from Kentucky. He'd gone back to California, and soon he was calling me saying he was hanging out with Hollywood types like Nicole Simpson. A few months later, Glenn risked coming back home, even though Ohio police wanted him for questioning. In 1994, Glenn was living in L.A., and he came back to Hamilton for a visit, and that's why I decided to have a cookout and have my family over. He told me that he'd met this beautiful girl out in California, and her name was Nicole. 
and said that he had done work for her in her house and said that they went out a couple times for drinks. And he said, you know, Sean, my daughter and her look so much alike. And he said, she's married to this football player. See, he don't know much about sports. And he said, this football player, and he's black. He's famous, but I don't remember his name. He just remembered Nicole. I'm in my mother's house at this time, and they're already looking for Glenn. The phone rings, and I talk to him, and he asked me, so guess who I'm partying with? Nicole Simpson. I'm me. I, nobody knew who that was. I thought, well, who's that, Bart Simpson's sister? I mean, just joking. He said, no, that's when he told me that that, that was O.J. Simpson's wife. Actually, what he told me, he says, they got money, they're well off, and I'm taking her down. That seems like a pretty important piece of information, doesn't it? I mean, you can say, all right, well, the brother's full of shit. His sister? Both of his sisters? That's a lot of people to back up this ridiculous lie. For what reason? I mean, just simply based off the fact that your brother is a serial killer, you don't really need OJ and Nicole to make that story interesting. People weren't fucking fame addicts like they are now. So what do they have to gain by lying about this? Again, all three of these people? And if what they're saying is true, and he really was hanging around that scene at that time, and was that fixated on Nicole Simpson, she was going to be dead anyway. Same outcome with or without O.J. Simpson's help. Say this guy's Charlie. Charlie runs into O.J. on the night in question. Now, how does this dirt ball get anywhere near uh, O.J. Simpson in order to, to get this conversation going? Well, easy. None of O.J.'s friends are hanging out with him anymore. If you got a guy who's so crazed over his divorce that he murders his wife or is close to murdering his wife then he's not shutting up about it I mean, who the fuck wants to listen to that shit you ain't getting away from that conversation there's no conversation anybody's having with OJ that is longer than about a minute and a half because any longer than that you might say something that's going to have him talking about that divorce and going to be there all goddamn day I don't know if you've ever known somebody going through a divorce, they're fucking nauseating. Every conversation leads back to that divorce. Dad, Juice, check out that car. It's sharp, ain't it? Yeah, Ferrari. Used to have one of them. Now that motherfucker's driving it. Oh, shit. Here we go. Damn it. Here we go again. Another hour of you saying the exact same fucking thing. You've said 60 times since I said hello to you. Fuck. Glenn Rogers, on the other hand, is willing to listen. Not only is he listening, he's telling OJ all the things OJ wants to hear at that moment. And even if he's going way overboard, it's still better than, ah, man, you know, just, just gotta hang in there, man. You know, it happens. You just gotta... Plenty of fish in the sea, dude. You just gotta put the past in the past, put the water under the bridge. You know that shit's annoying when you are trying to find what he's what he's trying to what these divorced guys are are trying to do when they won't shut up about that shit. Is they're trying to make the person that they're ear raping with their problems understand what they're going through. Hear what this woman is putting him through, and then they want them to hate her as much as they do. It's a fool's errand no one does. But Glenn, on the other hand, especially after he's come up, well, Charlie as he's known, he's already wanted in multiple states by this point under the name Glenn Rogers for several other serial murders. So the idea that he would be telling everybody his name was Charlie also makes fucking sense. So Charlie's like, yeah, and, it, and Nicole's over there. She's doing all these drugs, and she's got all these you know low lives hanging out over there. And that OJ already wants to go over there and get some shit started because he's pissed about the all of the nonsense going on. So on the way over there, 
OJ's bitching, and instead of the whole, you know, man, you just can't let it get you down bullshit that everybody else keeps telling him, fucking Glenn Rogers sitting over here going, shit, man, I tell you what, bitch did that to me, I cut her fucking throat, man, ear to ear, chop her fucking head right off, and OJ's just so relieved to have somebody not going, ah, man, you know, just... <sighs> Take it one step at a time, man. He's, he's, I'd stand her upside down on her head, chop her fucking tits. I'm goddamn right, so you understand. You get it. Like, he's so happy that somebody gets it that he's not realizing, oh, wait, this guy might be a little fucking up. So they go walking up there. Nicole and Ron Goldman are already outside. Nicole, or uh, OJ starts arguing with Nicole. Nicole tells him to get the fuck out of her house and start slapping on him. OJ backhands her against the wall. Goldman jumps into a karate stance. OJ goes, Oh, you think you can kick my ass? And reaches back, takes that knife uh, out of Charlie's hand. Oh, yeah, Charlie carried a knife in there. I don't remember if uh, I gave that detail or not. But yeah, there, OJ had a knife that he kept, big knife that he kept under his seat in case, you know, people came on, started fucking with him or something when he was out, out on the street. Which, you can't carry a gun around in L.A., so that, I mean, that stands to reason. So you got Glenn slash Charlie standing back here with a knife. O.J.'s about to get into a scrape with Ron Goldman. Glenn hands him the knife. He goes that starts fucking Goldman up with it. And while O.J.'s killing Goldman, Glenn Rogers strolls over, uh, cuts Nicole up, and when O.J.'s done with Goldman... Now, this is the way OJ described it happening, was like he just came out of a dream, and all of a sudden, he's just standing there covered in blood trying to figure out what happened. Because in his confession, he does not mention killing Nicole. Ron Goldman, he mentions how that altercation went down, but he says, it's like I came out of a dream, and I'm covered in blood. I was trying to figure out whose blood it is, where, what was going on. And there's two dead bodies laying next to me. And Charlie's over here saying, you killed him, OJ. Now, OJ is a football player. And not that people knew this about this at the time, but football players get this thing called CTE. Blackout rage is one of the symptoms. Blackout rage, impulse control... That shit does kind of turn you into a different person. Um, Sam Kennison and uh, Roseanne Barr also had this. And it come on because they got hit by a car when they were a kid. Supposedly, in both cases, getting hit by that car knocked something out of their brain to where they don't have impulse control anymore. This is very common in football players. You can only test for it post-mortem. And they're probably not going to bother uh, with it in OJ's case. But it would be interesting to know if he suffered from that. Because if he did, well, that explains how that happened. Why OJ doesn't remember it. Or he maybe he doesn't remember killing Nicole because he didn't. But probably thinks he did. I mean, it's pretty logical to assume... You're holding the only knife you know about being in the situation, and there's two dead bodies. And now you got this guy who's helping you dispose of all that stuff very happily. And at the time, I don't think he'd ask too many questions. If you look at the anime, the original courtroom animation they did of how they speculated that event went down, they have OJ jumping out of the bushes like Solid Snake and knocking two people out in one motion... Which is not impossible, but why is it that OJ's a really good killer until it's over? Then all of a sudden, he's leaving evidence everywhere. He's leaving blood trails, footprints, dropping gloves. He goes from Jason Voorhees to Dorf Does Homicide. And here's what I think. I think OJ, despite all of his bullshit, despite all of his threats and all of his domestic abuse and all that... He, I don't think he really wanted to kill that woman. He thought he did. I think he was like that guy in Hostel too. He's talking a bunch of shit because he's angry. 
I could do this, I could do that. He's going off and buying fucking disguises. Yeah, like, what's his name? He's getting his fucking bloodhound tattoo. Badass! He's badass! Like, he's constantly hounding the, his buddy. You, you know, this ain't a whorehouse, pal. You don't just back out. You're gonna be a different man after today. As soon as the saw hit that girl's head, <laughs> he's crying in the fucking elevator. You finish it, man! <laughs> that was OJ. That's why he was fucking panicking. That's why there's evidence everywhere. That's why he went from a uh, cold-blooded assassin to a bumbling doofus. You see, because the, once the reality set in that he's in some shit, it was, it, it was start crying time. Well, how did Glenn Rogers not leave evidence, you may be asking? He probably did. Nobody was looking. They had their man, OJ. OJ left enough evidence to... It's not like... TV CSI. If they saw some blonde hairs laying in a pool of Nicole's blood, they just would have assumed they're Nicole's. Plus, Charlie Glenn Rogers ain't panicking. He's done this like 40-something times by this point. OJ's never killed anybody before. So yeah, OJ's fucking up all over the place. And OJ is, a, in terms of criminals, OJ is like Jerry Lundergaard from Fargo. Glenn Rogers is Otis from The Devil's Rejects. Phone rings, like, hello? And it was Glenn. He started talking to me, and he scared me, his voice and his laugh. And, and it sounded like he was possessed, like it wasn't Glenn. I knew it was Glenn, but he was something wrong with him. And then he said, yeah, guess what I'm doing? And I said, what? And I kept hearing this. And I said, what? And he said, I'm smacking these girls on their butt. And I said, Glenn, what are you talking about? And he said, they're dead. And I'm smacking them on their butt. And, and it freaked me out. And he was laughing. Real easy. You know, Hoss, if I'm not mistaken, I, I think I could still smell your wife's pussy stink on my gun. Hope it doesn't rust the barrel. Didn't uh, OJ bring up this Charlie guy during the trial? Because his defense was that he wasn't even there. I think O.J. was sitting back. Jose, said, okay, well, they found some of my blood at the scene. They found blood in the Bronco. Surely they're going to find one of this dude's mustache hairs or a fingerprint. Because, look, if they found a fingerprint that belonged to Glenn Rogers, ran it through the system, it would have came back as, holy shit, it's that guy. He was already wanted for several serial killings at that point. That would have cleared OJ. So I think OJ was gone. I wasn't even there. And just hoping they would find something. But once you're locked into the I was never there defense, you can't start throwing Charlie into the, the mix. Well, how do you know Charlie was there? You weren't, right? Why would Glenn Rogers get OJ involved at all? I don't know. I think he was really just playing that night by ear. He needed a lift over there. And according to his brother, he wanted a, a partner in serial murder. But his brother wouldn't do it. And that didn't mean OJ was going to like become his personal Otis tool or anything. But hey, you can have one night of fun with the guy, right? And if OJ brought a serial killer to the house, then why isn't it just safe to assume Glenn Rogers killed both of them? Well, because OJ cut himself while killing Ron Goldman. If Glenn Rogers had just started stabbing Ron Goldman, OJ's gears would have flipped and he would have went into protection mode and started trying to help Nicole, I think. Because that, that would switch his mindset too quickly. So again, it's not a reality. Killing somebody ain't a reality to OJ yet. He's talking shit. He's been talking shit. But once the blood starts coming out, he's going <laughs> to... Like, hostile too. And you don't, and even if he did kill both of them, he didn't kill that bitch because he hated her. That promise that you would sacrifice your life for somebody. I mean, everybody assumes that that's just jumping in front of a lone gunman like a Secret Service agent. Sure, that that's part of it. But there's another side to it, too. And that's the, uh, I'll fucking kill you and torch the rest of my life. If I can't have you. And he's already given you a confession. Sure, it's a framed in the you know narrative of a hypothetical. 
But even still, wouldn't you hypothetically, you know, describe what happened with Nicole? He claims he doesn't remember it. And maybe he doesn't. CTE. Or perhaps that memory is not even there to access because he didn't actually do it. But could very logically assume he did. He's holding the only knife that he knows of is in play, and there's two dead bodies laying right next to his feet. So all OJ's thinking about, because now all he's doing is panicking and trying to figure out how to get out of this situation. And thank God Charlie's here, because Charlie is apparently willing to help you uh, get rid of all of the evidence that you are here as much as he can. Now, if OJ had more wits about him uh, during that Ron Goldman murder instead of just being in a blackout rage and, you know, state of mind, if there was no, I had to come back to, like, if he had finished up with Goldman and went, oh, fuck, what did I just do? And then Nicole come rolling down the stairs, then Glenn would have had to kill OJ next. So OJ, in a weird way, might have just barely missed being a third body in that situation. So for OJ just to immediately buy, yeah, you killed them both. Oh shit, I did? That was a lucky break for Glenn. Because now, yeah, he didn't really want to kill OJ or Ronnie. He just wanted to kill Nicole because that was his thing. He liked murdering women. And again, I'm not saying that Glenn Rogers is like, you know, the Joker where he elaborately planned all that. It just, he played the night by ear. Let's just see what opportunity, you know, happens. There's a good chance he could have got there, and Ron Goldman just went, Hey, how you doing? And then she just went, Thanks for her sunglasses. It, it might have just been, he might have come up there in a rage, and Nicole just went, Look, let, let's just go inside and talk, and then left Charlie standing there with his thumb up his ass. It just happened to unfold in a way that couldn't have been better for uh, Glenn Charlie Rogers, couldn't have been worse for everyone else involved. But, uh, you know, if that is how the situation unfolded, does it change your view of OJ? Does it change your, does your hate shift a little more in a sympathetic direction? Does OJ be suddenly become a little more humanized? Is it okay if he plays fucking golf? Can he smile once in a while, 30 years later? Roman Polanski raped a kid, and they're still giving him Academy Awards. I think we can forgive OJ for killing Ron Goldman in a fit of CTE-induced rage while of the influence of a maniac who is lurking around the situation. It can happen to anybody, like getting drunk and running over someone, and then getting drunk and running over someone again, and getting drunk and running over someone again. But even then... You could still get cast in a remake of The Stepford Wives. Another gigantic mistake that was made in the prosecuting of O.J. Because, look, he should have went to jail for killing Goldman, at least. And Nicole, really. He's responsible for the situation going down, even if Glenn Rogers was there. And, and I'm correct about how that happened. He's still culpable. Any smart jury should have convicted him unless they were really going out of their way to ignore all the evidence and let him go just to let him go. Again, the Rodney King thing. But also, the prosecution thought if they packed the jury full of black women, that they would hear about all of the domestic abuse, because statistically, black households have a lot of domestic abuse. So they think that hearing stories about OJ, you know, previously slapping her around and shit, was going to trigger them to go like, oh my god, no, I know what it's like to be in a domestic abuse victim, so I immediately side with her. But that's not really how that works. If you are a, are a victim of, of things contrary to popular belief, you don't become more sensitive to it when it happens to other people. You become less sensitive to it. So, domestic abuse vic uh, victim... Domestic abused juror, here's how this math works. What was the rest of that bitch's life like? Okay, and he got slapped around a little bit. In your million dollar house, with your by your movie star football player husband. My bag of shit old man only makes like eight grand a year, and we live in the projects. I have all that, and I get beat up. You're eating filet mignon, I'm fighting roaches out of my cereal box. You're dead, and I would still trade lives with you. So, sympathy runs a little low. Now, you, you need a jury box full of Joey Behars that have never been hit in the mouth once 
so they can't even imagine the horror of it happening. Can't stick somebody in there that gets beat up every day and expect them to give a shit. So really, the abuse victim's not going to do anything but sit there and count all of your other blessings and measure them against whatever the situation. Oh, he hit you. And then what, your maid went and got you an ice bag? Okay. Those are my thoughts on O.J. Simpson. Did he do it? I think he did at least half of it. I think there's a good possibility. There's a reasonable doubt that uh, he might not have killed Nicole. Might not have. Again, ain't dying on this hill. But I, I hear OJ's story. I hear the uh, story of Glenn Rogers' siblings. And some things just kind of fall in place for me there. And it's not like oh, they caught OJ throwing, you know, the body parts of little children into a ditch. And went, yeah, let's let him go. Because of Rodney King. It's just a domestic situation that got out of hand. And it, it, it's something that can really happen to anybody. It's a relatable crime. Even if you wouldn't do it. It was a crime of passion. Leave it alone. And while OJ's not innocent, I think he might be forgivable. Just a little forgivable. There are way worse people. Alright. I'm done. So, but can we finally just forgive OJ? Eat shit and die, Ricky! Yep, yeah, that's what I thought. So, to that I say... Live, Bill. Yeah, to the world! Now all of you... Get the fuck out now before I get too mad to turn back. All y'all, now get the fuck out. Come on, you motherfuckers. Get the fuck out. Randy, you turning son of a bitch. Go fucking practice, Randy. Come on, Morris, you fucking genius. Get the fuck up and get the fuck out of here. God damn it.